Hello, comic book fans. Here's Earl Grey. Mm. And today I want to tell you something about these two books here. Actually, one story, um, Revoir Paris, or in uh, German, Nach Paris. The English title, I don't know um, anything about, but there is a volume planned some kind of omnibus uh, that collects these two thin books here in 110 pages, two thin books. So now I'm done to uh, collect these in one thicker book. But um, you should get this uh, immediately when it came out uh, because this is maybe Francois Coyton's best book. For me, the last book I read uh, from Scott and Peters is always the best book in a way, but this time I'm pretty sure that will st that this one will stay the test of time. It's really fantastic. The basic premise or main idea of the plot is pretty quickly told, I guess. It all evolves around Karin, this Asian-looking young lady here. Yeah. And uh, her father was a man from Paris, and her mother stemmed from a space colony called the Ark. And it was founded by... I Actually, I don't know if this is the Ark or the spaceship that visited uh, the Earth, uh, because the Ark want, wanted to um, connect again with uh, the Earth. It was founded by humans who fled the Earth, who escaped from the Earth because of the wars there and the danger of intoxication. And after a while they sent uh, some, some people down to Earth again to establish a new contact. And that's basically the uh, purpose and the reason for Karin to go back to the earth. She takes drugs uh, that transport her into the steampunkish, um, a bit kitschy Paris of her dreams, of her imagination, the Paris that she knows from the books uh, she has read. But we'll, she will soon discover then that when she arrives on earth, um, the actually Paris is a dark, very much darker place. Uh, it starts that it's raining and it's almost, uh, it's like a rich European arriving in an underdeveloped country where all the beggars uh, surround you and all the poor people try to uh, work for you or grab your money or something like that. And um, Karin meets this boy who takes her with this boat and they go for the journey to Paris or what Paris will be in the future. It's basically a road movie even through this future Fra France or this future world, um, even though Karin and yeah, the other characters here don't drive by car, um, but they walk or uh, go with other vehicles. Um, but we always witness this, this strange new world uh, through the eyes of our characters. And we don't really know too much more about this new world than Karin. We learn to look at this new world with her eyes and uh, discover one step after the other how this world has turned out to be according to Scoyton and Peters. And it's pretty much the most realistic take on a future world uh, that I have read for a long time because we have all here the social injustice, which I really would predict for the future. It has grown obviously enormously and uh, it 
isn't politically um, organized anymore. Um, pretty much is all in the hands of powers that, uh, as a mere human, you can't um, grasp anymore. This world here is more or less uh, the wet dream of a new economy, libertarian worldview, where you don't have any re regulation whatsoever. The little folks that can't comprehend the bigger plan. And uh, we are in the role of the tiny insects that crawl this world, so to speak can just discover all the yeah all things that are different from now so there's a jungle in the close perimeter to paris because climate has changed and so it's much warmer and wetter uh, and so it's pretty logical to have a jungle uh, out there out of outside of paris it's pretty much a wasteland and inside Paris, um, it's a mix of futuristic sites and the old buildings as well, which are um, collected in special archives to save them, to protect them from the toxic air. And in the center of Paris, we have this whole, this huge globe out of glass where the center of Paris is rebuilt, but um, without actually uh, actual real inhabitants. It's just a um, tourist park, so called Disneyland, if you will in Paris, uh, well, Paris is in Disneyland. And you can walk, uh, walk on the glass globe over this future Paris. So this world is immensely, tremendously glorious, fantastic. Despite of the story, which is good, but um, it's basically uh, this lady looking for her father. Um, but the world we can witness uh, during her search, during, during her journey, is so well thought out, so beautiful uh, are the pencils from um, Francois Coyton. And if one thing like that would be possible, uh, the the coloring technique technique of Francois Coyton is uh, has even improved since his last um, works. It's uh, just perfect. Everything he does uh, turns out to gold for me. Um, Every detail is really eye candy. And yeah, wherever I go in this book, it's a pure joy. You can look at a double page or you can look at one panel alone. For instance, this panel here. Oh, any any panel um, the art is tremendous and in combination with this wonderful world building it's very recommended it's not supposed to be one part of the obscure city series by the both of them but it feels very much that way um, so anyhow that's enough for today. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.